Hello everyone. Welcome to NPTEL course on remote sensing and GIS for rural development. This is week seven, lecture three. In this week, we have been looking at Google Earth Pro for accessing data and information quickly, which can aid in creating a database for rural development. In the last examples, we have looked over the lectures of Google Earth Pro's toolbox and what can be achieved. We also noted that there are some advanced levels which a lot of students do spend time on, for example, Google Mars and Google Moon, Sky, etc. But we will focus on Google Earth. A lot of data is present, and we looked at some methods to limit the bandwidth and memory of running Google Earth Pro. In today's class, we will look at how one can extract information from Google Earth Pro using ground control points. So in this week six and seven, we have been looking at tertiary or proxy data that can support our analysis for rural development. In one such case, we looked at a scanned topo sheet a scanned map from Survey of India. We notice that there is a lot of information hidden in the paper maps, but unless it is put on a GIS platform, we cannot quickly take the data out. And one way we looked at it is by using the lat longs provided in the map as ground control points or GCPs. So in the georeferencer tool, there is a lot of ground control points we need to give, at least six for uh, the nearest neighbor method that we used or polynomial two method. Let's say we need six points, but you get an image from aerial photography or a paper map that does not have this information. Then what do you do? Let's look at some examples. So this is a beautiful aerial imagery uh, taken from Maxar Technologies. I'm making a case here saying that this map is on the Elahanka Lake, but there is no other information on it. For example, there's no flat longs, date, time of flight, so the other accessories that you can take for using as ground control points. This is similar to a lot of paper maps. You can have a paper map like this, where only part of the map is available. You don't have the boundaries where you have the GCPs that can be extracted, nor the grids are there, but there is no data on the grids. Let me zoom in and show you. So you can see that there is no numbers or any data information that can be taken out. But there is this Yalar Kali and other data that can be identified, names, etc. So the idea here is to use Google Earth in parallel to look at similar imagery and then extract the data out. Let's take a case study of this image. This would have been taken in a particular date, right? So let us open our Google Earth Pro. And we can look at 
what are the points that can help in assessing these boundaries okay okay so let me open and share the google earth pro yes so now what you could see here is an image which was very similar to our image right to the to the image that we had on the powerpoint what we can access is for example you can look at some control points like these small circles i hope you remember that these two circles were present in the imagery also right so i'm going to share uh, just in between these two screens so that we can toggle back and forth and see the image so here we did we did see this part right so you do have these two uh, circles and this circle is there so kind of these are like aeration um, chambers or valves to keep aeration in the lake or some drainage lake so that if the lake goes over a particular volume it will be drained uh, so some 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 structure let's keep it as some structure and it's circular and there is a center in the circle right so that point is enough for taking one control point so this is how one can go ahead and collect ground control points let's take two points just for example okay so as i said this is the circle and you can take a point on the center of the circle and you collect the lat long so this lat long is where you can enter in the gcp lat long correct the ground control points in the georeferencer tool you can use this and put control points similarly let's take another point you can take another point here because that is also in the image you could take uh, this ground you could see there was a ground that was taken or uh, yeah airport right so this is a, a flight uh, deck so or a pathway runway for the flight uh, you can take um, these two one of these two chambers the, cen the center of the chamber because airports don't change much right so all these the planes you can see here the planes all these are parked uh, looks like a uh, uh, air force base uh, because there's no commercial means it'll be too long, too much longer or a bit bigger than this one, right? So you have these two uh, hangers also. You can take those locations. For example, you can see either you can put your uh, pointer here and read it at the bottom of the screen. You can see at the bottom of the screen, there is the lat longs. If I put the marker here or just put the marker on top. And then same way you have to put the marker on the image. Okay, when you do the GCP points, you remember in the GCP points, you can zoom in and put the points. Okay, so you could see the lake and on top of the lake, there are some uh, areas of interest. The airport is around here somewhere, right? So you could extract those points clearly from the maps right so these parts have been changed so we don't know much about maybe we can use a different area image let it load and then we will find so you can keep on updating the image to find the correct control points and then extract those control points See, you can see here something is developing or maybe we'll just use the latest one. Oh yeah, so there is the ground. So maybe the ground was being built. Initially there was no ground, right? So they're trying to build the ground. Uh, there's nothing here, but then in the recent years, in 2022, there's two grounds, right? So it looks like one um, track and field and then a cricket ground. So, and a football ground also. So you can put a, a pointer at the, at the center of the ground or the center of the uh, cricket or football, you can see here, there is a, Z, a circle and a center. So you can just put it, this is easier to mark. 
You can put it on the center and then take the lat long. So by doing this, you can extract control points into your GCP, uh, in the georeferencer, and then you can reference the image, which we have in the uh, Google document. So this is it. Using Google Earth Pro, we have shown that uh, we can extract information. First thing, the first step is to focus on the image you have. Find points where exactly you can put a, put a um, point. As I said, let's see, uh, I'm going to put some points here. Okay, so we said that this is one point. This is one point. And then we saw a cricket ground, a football ground. In the center of the football ground, we put a point. You'll have to zoom in. So when you do the georeferencer, you know you will zoom in and then take the values. Then you go back and forth in Google Earth and then you collect the GCP point lat longs, put it here, and then you extract it. The same thing here. You could look at the center of the lake or the center of the structure. So the center of the structure does have a point. So this one, you could see here, there is a point. I'll show you. Okay, in the Google Earth, if you go back to Google Earth, we said this structure, right? There you are. So you see this semicircle, and then the center of the circle has a point. So here we can take a lat long, and that lat long will coincide to the lat long here, and then we take the GCP points. This is, um, as, it's not as accurate as taking values from a map, but if you triangulate the four or six points, take as much points as you can, let's say six, eight points, then while triangulating between the points, uh, there will be some, there will be some uh, uh, assessments and uh, the accuracy will be improved because of the model, because it's interpolating between the data. Okay, so let's move on now. We will uh, go to the QGIS part. So this is by shifting back and forth between the two softwares. One is Google Earth Pro and then QGIS. However, there are multiple ways of bringing a map background into QGIS. We will look at some, but before that, I would like to introduce the concept of plugins. So plugins are a toolbox, a set of toolboxes that have already been created by users, volunteers, and you can run it efficiently or effectively um, with simple inputs. Say, for example, you need to add A plus B plus C is equals to D. Instead of putting A, B, C separately and merging them into one raster, you can open this tool and just quickly add it. So it's basically a GUI, a graphical user interface with all the tools in the background. So let me introduce the concept of plugins from where we will jump into a couple of plugins, which are very important for bringing the background image. So in the user guide, you will find that the uh, plugin uh, database is there uh, for uh, learning and understanding the plugins. The link is given up here. So let me quickly open it. And I'm sharing my screen now. So in this plugin, what do you see is that um, in the tutorial, it says about the plugin tab, the core and, ex and external plugins. Core means some tool, tool sets, toolboxes that are always in QGIS. You'll always be using it. Okay, they are written in one of the two languages, either C++ or Python. Uh, mostly it is in the Python uh, programming language. 
Um, and it is a core development team that has created the core plugins. If you click the core plugins, you will find what the core plugins are. It's basically database manager, grass, offline tools, processing, saga, topology, checker, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Then, as I said, you have an option of including or using the tools that have been created by volunteers and users just like you and me. So they would have stored it in a GitHub or some other uh, cloud space and then merged it with the QGIS catalog. And all you can do is if you like the tool or if you heard good things about the tool, you can import it into your QGIS and run it. So that's what we'll be doing today. We'll be looking at a particular QGIS plugin uh, and then accessing the benefits of this plugin by using a database. So there is a settings tab, uh, there is a updated tab to show how much are updated, um, and then all tab. We'll go through all this uh, in a quick example mode. So let me share my QGIS. While my QGIS is opening, I'd also like to uh, mention to you that some of these plugins work, okay? And some they don't work because uh, they are created for a particular uh, purpose for a particular region. And it requires you to have login to some systems, for example, an account. Uh, so you will have to read more about it. Uh, and sometimes they have bugs. So that bugs means there's not viruses but it, it doesn't work after some time or it runs in a loop. And that is why they are not part of the core plugs, core tools. These are good tools, but they are not core. So I would recommend you to read about them, look at them in the literature if they have been used widely. And if so, you can use it for understanding the uh, usefulness of these tools. So let me open the QGIS uh, or share my uh, QGIS uh, page. Okay. And we will open a new template and go to plugin. Okay. So, first, if I click plugin, I already have some plugins, uh, for example, Google Earth Engine plugin and uh, Jaltol plugin. So, first, I want to teach you about the Python console. So, this is where you can run a code from Python um, about a tool and execute it. You can do an editor, click on the editing tool, and then you can edit the tool, uh, copy the code, paste it, run it, and then it comes to here, and then you run it, okay? So for now, we are not going to use the Python. It's kind of advanced. So we'll be using the manage and install plugins. Once you click it, you'll find this opening out. It's called fetching repositories or database of tools. As I said, there is one cloud space where all the tools are, are being linked to. Uh, and each time you open QGIS and open this manage uh, toolbox, it will run and bring it. Only when you're opening it new. For example, if I close it and then run it again, it won't take that much time. Okay, it pops up. It doesn't wait for the repository because you just updated it. But when you close the QGIS and then open, uh, reopen it again, then it will check for new updates and then link it. So what it first goes is into the installed box. So how many plugins have I already installed? Looks like I have a couple of uh, toolboxes installed or plugins installed. Uh, these are kind of apps in terms of your mobile phone and apps Play Store. Uh, so this is your Play Store for uh, downloading uh, new apps. Um, and as, as apps sometimes work, sometimes need updates, the same thing goes for plugins. They are not the core. So every phone has core apps. Let's say my camera is a core app. Uh, my messaging, my phone call is a core app. Uh, you will not throw it out and you cannot delete it. So, so like that, you cannot delete uh, some of these apps. For example, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to or I cannot to delete this toolbox or this add new toolbox. You cannot delete it. You can remove it from the uh, toolbar so that you can have more space, but you cannot delete, delete it. It's all, toolbars are all with, inside the toolbars, these are, core tools, so let it will always be there. So in the plugins, manage uh, and install plugins, there are core, 
uh, uh, which are not going to be visible here. These are only additional plugins. So apps are additional. Uh, and sometimes you will install, reinstall, all this happens in this. So this is like your settings for your QGIS app. Uh, so now what you can do is you can see like how many I already have. Uh, I know some of them are not working, so I would, I would not put a tick box on them uh, because it's taking my space on the top or just taking slow because it, it um, takes time to install. Okay, not install is what are the remaining plugins that are not installed. As I said, these plugins get updated regularly. So let's look at how many plugins are there. There's a lot and it depends on what are you going to use it for and different languages and setting. We'll go through some um, of these plugins to just see what they are and how they are done. Uh, there's always like a uh, stable version, release some PDFs about where you can find the reports, how many people have downloaded it. So 10,000 downloads, eight votes uh, have been given. Same like a shopping app. Uh, if you go to an app, you'll see how many people have downloaded it. Uh, some reviews here you don't see the reviews uh, you can also see the star rating etc so this is upgradable so within my um, um, apps or plugins that i already have there are some that can be upgraded so let's upgrade the plugin so once you upgrade it, it says downloading the data to upgrade and then it's upgraded that's it it's done so now that part is gone so then Google Earth Engine, let me upgrade that plugin also. And it says there's a newer version, so it's getting updated, which is good. And then you can upgrade. You can also uninstall and reinstall a new plugin. Okay. It says not responding. Maybe some there is some bug and or maybe they, they don't have the uh, updated version. So let it run for some time. Uh, but meantime, let me open another QGIS also. So the, the best way is to always check for updates um, online or uh, it may pop up saying that there is an update when we ran the software um, and those kind of uh, updates we can use for the plugins. Okay, so now moving on, uh, we will Okay, so let me reshare the screen again. Okay, for some reason uh, it had closed, but it's okay. Now we have a new template, new plugin, go to manage. So you see all my other tools have been gone because I had up updated them and you can easily use them. Then there's not install, install from zip if you want to install a zip location and, and uh, settings. Check updates on startup if you want to check uh, updates on startup every time. Don't do it because it'll just take more time. If you want a particular update, go to the app, read it, and then update it. If you do this, every time you start QGIS, it will check for updates. Okay, and then show experimental plugins, uh, deprecated plugins, don't do, only if you need, you can do, otherwise don't do it. And this is the default um, uh, plugin repository or the data bank of all the plugins where when you want to install it, it goes there. Suppose this is not uh, readable, you have to edit it or reload the repository. Okay, so now I come to all and these are all the uh, plugins that are available. Uh, let's say clip multiple layers. It says, first, it's very, very simple to read. So it's just clip all displayed layers, rasters and vectors with a polygon layer selected. For example, uh, this is like a toolbox. Okay, so let me draw and show you what it means uh, so that you can understand more about a plugin. Uh, suppose you have one layer and then you have a tool to clip. So the output would be the same with one layer so this is one layer you clip it into this right you clip it using the uh, clip tool and then this uh, shape file you get this inside is one okay uh, but now if you have multiple layers if you have multiples layers let's say one to n so what happens is when you clip this using this clip multiple layers you will get one to n multiple layers within a single button so you don't have to do it again and again and again. 
just select all the layers, select one clip uh, mask, clip tool, you select and click, it will automatically clip everything. You don't have to, let's say uh, you have uh, land boundary, water boundary, uh, soil type, uh, agricultural type, everything has different, different layers, five layers. All these five layers will be totally clipped into one uh, parcel uh, by just this uh, toolbox. So it's a very, very useful toolbox. They have given an icon also here, which uh, which kind of uh, relates to what the tool is about. So now uh, let's go into uh, what we came here for. I'll show you that screen so that uh, we can see in the presentation what we are going to look at. We are going to use the base maps, uh, okay? So base map is, suppose you have data, behind the base, behind the data, there, there is some base map that is similar to Google Earth Pro maps. In the Google Earth Pro, you have base maps loaded, and that is why you can easily, quickly take out information. So that is what we are going to use now. Right now, until date, we have been only using the boundary of India as the base map. Now we're going to use some data. So what does a base map help in? It provides uh, aids accuracy, because if you say there is a land uh, and, and you cut the land from multiple layers and bring it into the uh, uh, QGIS map, unless you have a base map to authenticate that, yes, both the layers are in the same location, you are, you are correct. Otherwise, you are wrong. For example, you clipped uh, Karnataka boundary, and then when you bring it into the India boundary, if the Karnataka boundary is going into the ocean a little bit, it's wrong. So you'll have to make sure that the boundaries are correct. So that is the age accuracy. Uh, it helps in importing data. So from the base map and the shape file you have, you can extract data. So the base map might be the global coverage. You don't need the global data, but only for your area, you can zoom in and take the data out. More attributes can be collected. Suppose your data has only state names, uh, country name, and then some major roads, but your base map has uh, the names in, in uh, different language, suppose Hindi, Tamil, uh, and then you can take the name out of Tamil uh, and put it into the database. Then you can also see, can be used for data mining. This is where uh, some tricky, tricky things uh, that are very sensitive may not be put on the big uh, open source maps, but in the paper maps and base maps, they might be available. Location of schools, Anganwadis, uh, these maps on the paper map can be used as a base map. Then from your data, you can add into the database. Of these tools, one widely used tool is called the Quick Map Service. Let me look, open the QGIS and let us install it live. What we will do is we will install the QGIS uh, plugin, show you how to install it, and then run it. Now you could see it. So go to plugin, manage and install plugins. Here in the search box, you can type quick map services. Okay. Let's read through it. It's easy to add base map and geo services, easy to use list of services and search for finding database, uh, data sets, base maps. Uh, and then you can contribute uh, new services also here, which means you can you can also give some links to new new data. For example, ISRO data is there. Uh, maybe it is not uh, linked to this database and you can link it just by writing some codes. You can also give a feedback to this uh, contact list. So 918 votes, really high votes, uh, more than 4 million downloads, which is pretty big. And a lot of updates have been done. Okay, so very recently they have done an updater also. Uh, just two weeks before. So let's install the plugin. It's very simple to install. When you click install, it installs. There's no pay payment. There's no uh, membership. So it's all free open source. That is the beauty of using uh, QGIS. It gets installed. So now if you see, all these have been installed. Okay. Uh, and it, it, it says the install plugin goes off. Now it says reinstall or uninstall. Uninstall is if you want to uninstall the plugin. Reinstall is sometimes when it installs, maybe some error script in uh, your memory did not work properly. Uh, and so it didn't open properly. So you, you can actually uh, reinstall it if you need. 
but let's go to uh, install services and only one one uh, tool is there so we can close let's see if it has come up plugin and then um, uh, in the manage again you open yes it's installed very good and the symbol is there so the symbol is very different so this is the symbol for quick map service some plugins you will see them open out here but some others will occupy the toolbar so you should know where and how the toolbar looks like for example if you go to manage uh, um, tool and then if you see this logo if you see this icon that is what the icon is going to be so now you can see this icon right here i'm putting it side by side so you can see that it has populated okay so let's uninstall the plugin yes and you'll see that these will vanish so now it's gone now i'm going to install the plugin and then it has come up okay so i'm going to close it okay so now to start up let's fire up a, a database a vector uh, file let's say i would like to see the india file shape file so i'm going to say india shape file open add and now it has been added so to this we are going to add the base file okay base maps so these are quick map services meta search and search qms i'm going to do the quick map service and then it asks me what base map you want so if you remember while installing it said that you can also install and give maps into this service so uh, if we are in advanced level and we know that the map is accurate we can also install it into this package for now we're not going to install we are a user we are not a contributor we'll be a user so let's say the nasa you have earthquake hazard uh, distribution peak ground acceleration map or earthquake hazard distribution these are the two data sets base maps that are available from nasa but osm has osm standard map so let me click the osm standard map you will see that it has been populated uh, in the layers list and in the behind also so i'm going to make india a little bit uh, just the outline so go to properties simple fill i want the fill color to be maybe red and i say okay and the stroke or the thickness could be one okay i don't want fill just simple outline the black red okay one millimeter thickness apply okay so now you could see the boundary and behind that you could see the values okay the base map which has been generated uh, from osm open street maps so you can see that a lot of roads streets uh, are coming up uh, basically from the open street map database uh, this was not available for us so now we can draw and and, and extract out like we did in the uh, layer uh, analysis like for example here we used and say shape file and then we traced along this and said this is a, a road now we can trace along this and say this is a river etc okay so this is one uh, base map that we can use also to see if my our boundaries are correct okay so you can see that here there's an osm standard map now you can click the second part which is a search if you click the search then you can see that some data sets are coming up and you could see that uh, you can see valid and then everything can come up or, or just the valid ones filter by extent uh, it's going to filter like within this database how many data sets are coming okay so you have uh, someone uh, populating from uh, imagico.de uh, and then some maps which are uh, about adams bridge so adams bridge is here this is called adams bridge by some people so let's say i'm adding it if you add it again it comes up here okay i'm going to take these other layers out and as i said the adams bridge is between sri lanka and tamil nadu tamil nadu so let's go to tamil nadu and then see how it looks like the zoom to layer okay maybe okay let us put this back okay okay so i'm going to take the osm off and then just keep the 
Magic Odi, Adams Bridge. So now you could see that the Danish Kodi and Sri Lanka part is connected by the Adams Bridge um, or Ram Setu Palam uh, Bridge. And then that has been done. So this is a database base map that can be added. Uh, you don't have to download it. All you did is just the uh, plugin and then it came up, right? So you can say uh, Google with correct spellings and then all the Google plugins will come up. Uh, it's searching, let it search for some time. Uh, see all, so initially you had only two, three, but now you could see how much, how much more uh, have come up. So you just have to search. There's, there's many, many, many uh, base map layers. So this is cloudless uh, Sentinel-2 data. I'm going to add a Sentinel-2 data. You see? So without cloud cover. So it has picked a date uh, where there is no cloud cover and you can click on the details to find um, another screen has opened. So let me share that screen. Okay, so it's opening up and saying that what it means. So you can see here. So this is what the link has been opening up when I click the QGIS map. So I click the details, uh, then it went to that. Okay, so that is one layer, which is very good. Uh, it happens throughout the world, it, 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 it does have data. So, but it's a large data set, so it is taking some time, see? And Sentinel is very, very high resolution, uh, 10 meters in some uh, locations, so you will see it. So this is the uh, ES cloudless map. So when I click the details, it came to here, and you can see that what date the map was added, 2018. Um, uh, so when it was taken, um, the copyright extension, so this was the map that goes into the, uh, base map. So 2018 map has been updated. So May 16th was the map. Okay. So let's go back to the uh, map. Uh, and then let's say GLAD forest year loss 2000 to 2021. So within the Indian boundary, if I'm going to add this base map, you're going to see where the forest loss has been high. Red color means forest loss. Okay. So that is normally the terminology that is used. Um, and you can see it from the details here. We use this one, right? 2000, 2021. Uh, let it open up while we are going back to this map. So now it has been generated. You can see a lot of uh, forest loss here. And uh, this also says uh, data forest loss, Earth Engine Partners 2013, the date has been done. Uh, date added 2020, last updated 2022. Uh, so, but the, the data is from 20, 2000 to 2021, okay? Um, and then it says, uh, so basically this is the same map. This map, which has uh, been uh, the red color showing that there is loss of forest cover. So green means it's gaining, red means it's losing, okay? So here you can only see the loss because the term we are using is loss. Okay, so that is one. Uh, if we don't need it, we can remove it. All these, as I said, we can remove the layers and say, okay. Uh, so all these are Google. Uh, one thing that we can use is Google traffic, right? You don't see that as a map, let us use it. Um, so these are the high traffic regions and, and low traffic regions uh, getting populated um, along the map. It will take some time um, because uh, all throughout India, it may be looking at. Right, and maybe it's not only populated um, along the major highways. So let's come down and see what else we can see that we can use. Uh, Google, all these are Google, there's some Spain, Spanish uh, data set, etc. Let's see if there is some ISRO database. Yes, there is a Bhuvan ISRO database, so we can add it. So instead of going to Bhuvan, taking this shape file, going to Bhuvan, we can quickly analyze it here. So see, there is a layer, it cannot be added to the map. There is some errors, uh, some plugin uh, extension may not have been there. So we can uh, take it off. Um, so these are the maps that we have used. Let's use one more, uh, night light. Uh, we don't have it. Um, Grace is a groundwater satellite, we don't have it. So this is how you can search for some satellites and uh, use it, let's say NASA. Let's see what NASA has um, in terms of uh, database for India. Plenty, plenty of uh, uh, NASA. So there's fires in the past seven days. So if you're looking at, at uh, stubble burning and fires, you can look at that. Uh, hotspots, uh, fires, uh, aqua hotspots, 
global multi-resolution uh, topography synthesis. Um, a, lo a lot of these things are there. Let's say just add the aqua, and then let me take off the, the traffic. And then we have to say, OK. And then the red mark, I'll click OK. OK, so sometimes the data might not load uh, because it is for pan world or it just takes a long time to load. Remember, this is a plugin that talks to the data source and brings the data source. So it may take some time uh, for uh, downloading the data. OK, but I would like to finish with uh, just the one data that we can use. And mostly it's Google Bing Maps are there, like Microsoft. Uh, Google is there. So let's just use a Google Landsat Mosaic. Uh, Mosaic is a satellite that has been mosaic together to give the overall image. Uh, and there it is. Beautiful Landsat Mosaic is coming. So I'm going to remove the other layers just for memory. Um, and you can see that beautifully the map is getting populated. Very, very high resolution uh, imagery that you're looking at what the color means etc you can collect click on the details and go to the map and look at it so this is about adding plugins and through plugins a base map a base map behind your map that helps you visualize your content so my content is this india shape file uh, but i want to visualize other data with it so what i do is i can add base maps readily instead of going and downloading the data and putting it in uh, you can just click these buttons add and then it quickly adds for this, you need to install the plugin, which I showed in today's lecture. So if you go into the uh, uh, village areas with the village boundary, uh, you can definitely see uh, how the water bodies have been changing, the green color reflecting the uh, good um, crop uh, growth and crop type. Uh, you can also see NDVI, which is a uh, indicator of um, uh, water and vegetation. Uh, and then NDWI for water, so there's no results for that, but NDVI, we do have some uh, normalized indicators. Okay, so uh, we will leave it here, but mostly uh, the Google uh, images uh, are pretty good in terms of uh, GLAD, Landsat, Mosaics, uh, and then uh, satellite hybrid models, maps, etc. I'll close here and uh, continue in the next class. I'll see you in the next class. Thank you.